Oh, what's up? This is Hulk Sickle, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Shout out Sick too, man. Stuck in the crib watching power. Don't wanna be ghost, wanna be like Tariq. As soon as I seen him put drugs in the ceiling, I thought to myself, it's a day. All right, y'all. So we have Hulk Sicko with us jumping the, off the porch today. What's the meaning behind your name? <laughs> the name it was something that came up with some of uh, my teammate. And like, it was something like a nickname they used to call me because after um, practice, I used to like lift. And mm -hmm. they used to think, you know, they used to be like, you think you're the Hulk or something. So I just like, I just like ran with it. And then the sicko thing is just something that came up with my teammate. And then we just filmed it. We just dragged it. And I just started, started using it. All right, so you are originally from New York. What part of New York are you from? Bronx, New York, Co-op City, Sec 2. What's the culture like over there? It's everything's up tempo, you feel me? I feel like you gotta, you gotta grind for everything. It's like, it's a good place to be from, you feel me? Teach you a lot of things. Now, I know New York is going crazy with the drill right now. For sure, for sure. How do you feel about that? Uh, I like it, you feel me? Uh, I said before, it gives like a, it gives like a personality to mm -hmm. like the Bronx and stuff like that, you feel me? And I mean, a lot of people like it, it's good, you feel me? You turn up to it, so I like it. A lot of my guys, they make drill music too. Oh, for real? Yeah, my boy Howie Double O, EJ Banks, they make drill music, so we got a jacket, okay, yeah. Okay, we, we gotta check them out. For sure. Now, what was it like for you personally growing up there? Um, I feel like, a lot of it was like when I when I was first um, was in Co-op City, uh, I, I was there till I was like 14. So I, I grew up. I was there for like um, I want to say yeah, like probably like 12 years. So being there, I feel like once again it helped me learn a lot of things. Um, I was a basketball player, so really I feel like that helped me stay out of some trouble too. Right. Because I wasn't really you feel me. A lot of people was looking out for me, knowing that I was a basketball player. So, yeah. All right, so what would you say, well, this is a DGB tradition for us to ask you when you officially jumped off the porch, which can also mean when you started to, you know, live your own life and discover life for your own. I want to say probably when I, when I left um, and started going to like boarding school and stuff like that, because I was away from home. So that was probably when I was like 13, 14. So, um, just living away from like my parents and stuff. It's yeah. just that like, you got to start to like learn everything for yourself And even now like being away from not even just being at school and stuff like that But just being like all the way on a different side because right now I'm in Cali for a little bit So just being on another side of like the whole country I feel like it definitely helps you mature faster feel me just be yourself learn who you are now, I know that you, like you stated uh, a few minutes ago, that you now move in Los Angeles. So what really sparked that transition from growing up in New York in your hometown to now being in L.A.? First, I feel like there's just a lot of stuff going on in New York right now. So on um, the focus on music, it's just better to be in Los Angeles because you feel me, there's a lot of stuff that you feel me, a lot of people that cater to music out there. So. I got to like shoot Viz and you feel me, get in the studio with good producers. I really like my engineer out there, so. Was it a little difficult, like getting, well, trying to navigate through LA? Cause you know, it's a different type of beast. <laughs> nah, yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like it's just me and the right people, you feel me, knowing who's good for you and right. stuff like that. So once you learn all that, I feel like everything else is easy, you feel me? I'm with my guys out there, so. It's like people that I grew up with, so it's all like, I feel like it's the same as being kind of like in New York, it's just we in a, we just in a different atmosphere. I just like having people that I grew up with around me, so. Mm -hmm. um, did you have any challenges when you first got out there? Um, I feel like in terms of adjusting, it was just like different because I feel like, I don't know, a lot of people out there, like, it's just like, you feel me, in terms of making connections, you gotta really be like constantly um, meeting people. You gotta start mm -hmm. to like really push the agenda for like meeting people and stuff like that to really get your music out there and getting people to hear it and stuff like that. So I feel like once I started using like really Instagram, really to connect with people and sort of like get next to like certain um, people who shoot videos and stuff mm -hmm. like that and photographers, I feel like that helped. But other than that, I don't think I was really I don't say struggle, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Now, just going back to your childhood really quick, what would you say was like a really big life lesson that you learned? Life lesson that I learned? Um, I feel like just to be yourself. 
Because I feel like a lot of people, you feel me, they, you can get exposed for really, you feel me, trying to be something that you're not. So I feel like just being yourself and knowing like your role and everything like that, even with like the music stuff too, like everybody knowing their role and everybody, you feel me, even stuff when you're just trying to like do stuff with your guys or whatever you're trying to do, just knowing your role, being yourself. Yeah, it's really dope that you like put that reminder out there because I feel like when you do enter the industry, you know, it can kind of get crazy and you can kind of get lost in the sauce and in the image that people try to portray. No, nah, definitely, definitely for sure. You see that happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, going into your music career, how exactly did you start it? So, I would say I really started making music for fun. Um, in high school and then really when I had hip surgery and I knew I wasn't playing basketball no more that's when I really started like focusing up on music I really started taking it as like a passion you feel me people was letting me know that they like my music that helped you feel me me taking more seriously myself because it was just something that I just like to do like I used to listen to music so once I started making it you feel me I had people around me that was making music too so I was just like let me try it and then it just went from there. But I probably see I started taking it more seriously this last year, really, and started really? shooting music videos and stuff like that. Yeah, before it was just a hobby for real, but I feel like I'm starting to take it seriously now. What, what would you say was like the motivation for you to start taking it serious? Um, I feel like definitely people around me just telling me that they really like my music because sometimes I make a song and I don't think it's, you feel me, it's that good. Like, I really, yeah. I'm really picky like with the songs <laughs> that I like. So just people telling me that you feel me? They really like my music. Like people DMing me. I got a DM that really made me um, really want to keep doing music. It was somebody from another country that I didn't even know. So just stuff like that, I say, really make me feel like I could really do it. Wow. So who were some musical influences for you? Um, I'd probably say um, when I was when I was younger, my cousin he used to always play Lil Wayne. So I used to listen to him a lot. Um, just because my cousin was always playing him, so I used to just play what he played. And then um, just now, I probably, I listen to a lot of, um, probably Lil Baby, a lot of um, No Cap. I really like they type of music, the stuff that they talk about. I'm starting to listen to a lot of Hot Boy, too. Even New York artists, too. I like A Boogie, definitely. I like his new tape, so just I listen to him a lot, too. Now, if you could give some game to other up and coming artists, what would you tell them? I would tell them just really stay consistent, you feel me? Don't don't listen to the people that's telling you not to, you feel me? Be on your shit and do what you gotta do. Definitely just stay consistent, and you feel me? Once you see something working, just keep doing it. Right. Um, what would you say is like a big risk that you've had to take with your music career? Mm, that's a good question. Probably. I would say really just um, moving to Cali and just starting like a whole, like I feel like it's just a whole different life really, just because I'm really focusing more on music. I'm really trying to like invest more in my music. And you know, sometimes now with a lot of things with music, like you got to put a lot of money behind it and stuff like that to really make it go. So I feel like just a risk of like, you feel me, not doing what you feel me, my mom wanted me to do and stuff like that. And just going out there and doing what I want to do, that definitely helped. Oh, shoot. Was so, out. your mom, what was she like at first? I mean, you feel me? I went to boarding school, so she was like, you know, your parents, they want you to go to school, so that's what she wanted me to do, but I was just like, that's not something <laughs> I wanted to do, you feel me? Yeah. But, Did she have a hard time accepting that you wanted to be a rapper and you moving to L.A.? Oh, nah, definitely, yeah. She always be telling me to come back. Like, every time I come <laughs> back and see her, yeah. she just be like, you sure you don't want to stay for, like, you feel me? You could live here, like, but, you know, you got to grow up. So it's like, she just got to understand. <laughs> she going to see, like, you know, parents always be like, nah, when it comes to the creative careers. But once they see the money coming in, you know, they don't trip no more. Nah, yeah, you got to take care of your parents, too. That's a fact, once the money coming in. So how, well not how, but how would you describe your style when it comes to your music? I would say um, I'm a really like melodic, melodic rapper. I do a lot of like singing and rapping and stuff like that. I don't got a lot of like rap, rap songs, but you feel me? As I said, the people I listen to are the people that kind of influence my sound, I would definitely say. Um, 
So I'm just a melodic rapper, you feel me? I like to talk about things that happened in my life that just so people could get to know me more. Yeah. That's what I would say, yeah. Now, you're an independent artist, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, correct. So, how has that independent grind been looking for you? I mean, I feel like it's definitely, it's definitely different than having, like, a label behind you. You got to really, the people that you with on the daily, those are the people that's really helping you, you feel me, right. push your career and stuff like that. So, I really like it because I'm starting to, like, learn stuff, too. Like as the process goes on and really making music and getting stuff done. So I really like it, I say. Really? That's kind of different to hear. Cause you know, a lot of people will be like, man, I'm spending so much money. Like I don't got no tea. Like I'm really doing all this shit by myself. But yeah, that's different. <laughs> nah, yeah, I mean, the guys around me, they definitely, you feel me? When you got a team that really, when they, when they really believe in you, they help and mm -hmm. you feel me? and go towards the things that you want to do. So I feel like I'm an independent artist, but I definitely have guys around me that help, you feel me, and support what I do, so for sure. Now, do you think you'll ever sign to a label, or do you even want to sign to a label? Um, I don't know, I feel like that's something that will have to be done the right way. Right. And something I would have to think about I me. Mean, I don't know. Right now, I like how things are going. So it would just have to be, you feel me? If it was, the situation was right. Now, getting back into, you know, your music, when do you feel like you make the best music? Me? I feel like I make the best music at night or like when something, when something just happened. Or something <laughs> that I don't like just happened. Like, there was a situation one time when uh, me and uh, my man Sabelle, we got in the studio after something happened, we just made like a crazy song. So those type of times where you feel me, you just feel a type of way or you just got a certain energy in you. I feel like I make the best music like that. Dang, okay, now that you said you had a situation, you're like, you got any crazy LA stories? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got, I got a story. <laughs> It was just a little, it was just a little scuffle. It was nothing crazy, but. You out there boxing in LA. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, LA's a funny place. <laughs> yeah, LA's cool though, LA's cool though. Now, um, I saw that you haven't released a project since like 2019, if I'm mistaken. Yeah, for so sure. So what's been the deal with that? So I just, I just really feel like I gotta shoot more music videos and you feel me, get my face out more before I put up real project that I really want to push out, especially because, mm -hmm. you feel me, I'm not really that big of an artist yet, so I just want people to see my face more, so I've just been trying to shoot more music videos before I really have a couple of songs that I want to put together and really call it a project. Right, and um, with you like up and coming and getting some buzz around your name, how exactly did that go about for you? Was it a single that you dropped or? I feel like it was just sort of like me, um, really meeting different people and just definitely um, keeping on dropping like different types of music. Um, I definitely had two tapes out that mm -hmm. I feel like um, a lot of people who were listening to me early on uh, sort of attached to. So um, the first one, Slap Yourself, that was the one that I really, when I started, I wanted to kind of start taking it seriously when I was younger. That was probably the first tape that I dropped that I really liked, you feel me, for the songs that I had. And that was something that I recorded like a lot of songs was like in the basement of Audacity, like not even like in a real studio. Wow. Now, um, what are your thoughts on the rap game right now? I feel like it's constantly, it's constantly changing like, and it makes people, it makes like people change their music a lot. Uh, so I feel like you just gotta constantly like, Keep, up. keep adjusting, you feel me? Yeah. To like, definitely like, I don't feel like you gotta change your sound a certain way, but like, as time goes on, you feel me, people start liking different types of music, you feel me? A lot of different social media things come out, so it's like you just gotta be up to date. Right. Um, if there's anything that you could change in the rap game, what would it be? Just stop the cap. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Really? Yeah, just stop the cap. <laughs> so you recently dropped your single this year, um, Ghost Inter... I, I have a really uh, uh, heavy accent, so I'm going to try to pronounce his name or whoever's name. Tariq. Is it Tariq? Okay. Yeah, Tariq. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so you dropped your single, uh, Ghost of Tariq, this year. Talk to us about that. 
Yeah, so I really like power and like Tariq's character. You feel me? He went to boarding school and I feel like some of the things that he uh, went through in boarding school I actually seen. So it was like when I was watching him, I was like, damn, like that's crazy. You feel me? <laughs> and I really like power too. So uh -huh. um, you feel me? Not to be like Ghost was just a crazy character. Like he was a good character, but he was just messed up in the head. So. Hey, that's kind of that's kind of crazy because I really didn't register it when I saw the title and I listened to the song. I'm like, oh, it's Ghost and Tariq. And now that you're explaining it, I'm like, duh, like. <laughs> yeah, from power. So how would you say, um, well, how would you explain the creative process when it came to this new single? Um, to that single, it was just like, that. I was talking about stuff that happened to me in boarding school. So <laughs> <laughs> it was just funny. So a lot of people who, you feel me, watched the video from my school, they like knew it was up. You feel me, they sent me the video and they was <laughs> laughing. So I feel like I was just talking about stuff that actually happened. So it was really easy. I made that song while I was in Philly too. So that was like, it just worked out that way. That I was like near my school because I went to school in PA. So. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Um, I want to ask you, since we have your new single, Ghost and Tariq, what is next for you as an artist this year? Uh, so I got a single called Buck Buck that's probably going to drop um, next month in February. So look out for that. There's going to be a music video for that and just more music videos. I don't know about a whole solid tape yet. I don't know if I could say I could give you that this year, but just more music videos and more singles dropping each month couple of features dropping. I got a song with Howie Double O. You feel me? That I might drop soon, so. Is there any more artists that you want to work with? Um, right now, I mean, probably if I would say, I probably listen to a lot of No Cap, so if I could do a song with him, I really like his music. It's, yeah. It's nice. I can definitely see that. Now, before we wrap up, do you have any last words or shout outs? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, shout out to, um, you feel me, the HUD, shout out Sec2, you feel me, shout out to the guys that support me. My son B.A. just got home, my son Chevy about to get out, but just, you feel me, keep supporting me if you fuck with me. Simple like that. Stuck in the crib watching power, don't wanna be ghost, wanna be like Tariq. As soon as I seen him put drugs in the ceiling, I thought to myself, it's a dash, it was new. School tried to blend me 